Hey, this is Matt once again. What about to the video? Is another paid request this time for Bronson. Thank you so much for that. For those interested in requesting any type of videos, feel free to send them either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for the 1999 film Blast from the Past. Now, it's directed by Hugh Wilson, who has passed away. He did the very first Police Academy film. And then after this movie, he would do another film with Brendan Fraser called Dudley Do Right. I mean, to be fair, Hugh Wilson kind of helped kill <laughs> Brendan Fraser's career for a while because these two films were bid bombs. Like, this was a bid bomb. Deli Duroy was a bid bomb. That, along with films like Furry Vengeance, they, they said Brendan Fraser's career died for a bit. So. Uh, but, I mean, I, I guess, thankfully, it's made a little bit of a comeback. But I will say, with even though this film was a bomb, it was a cute movie. It was a cute film. Because the plot, as crazy as it is, it's the 1960s, you have Christopher Walken from Videodrome, not Videodrome, The Dead Zone. I think it's a different David Cronenberg film. The Dead Zone. He was also in The Rundown. He was in The Deer Hunter. Christopher Walken had been a lot of stuff. Teen of New York. Him and Sissy Spacek from the original Carrie. They're married. Uh, Walk is very obsessed and paranoid about there's going to be a nuclear war. It has a big old shelter built. They're having a party. Something happens. They go into the fallout shelter. And in reality, a plane fell on their place. But they think it was a nuclear war explosion, atomic bomb. So they decided to be locked in there for 35 years. Time locks won't open till 35 years later. During that, people up top think the family was killed, so things get built up over it. Meanwhile, in the fall of shelter, a kid is born. That kid will grow up to be Brendan Fraser. Now, it's a bit interesting to see kind of how they live a life in this fallout shelter. Christopher Walter was very much prepared. You know, he had a lot of food and Dr. Pepper is his drink and material to teach their son. All sorts of stuff. You tell Sissy Space's character is losing it. She likes to drink more. <laughs> but they don't go too far into that. So, they go through a bit of business, at least building up Brendan Fraser's theater growing up in this environment. And when the time locks open, Chris Walken goes up. He thinks it's all crazy because they're in the slums. And there's homeless people and there's hookers who will say, I'll be anything you want. So, now you have a group of people that will take things literally that doesn't understand sarcasm, doesn't understand the world. So Walken thinks, oh, such a, they could be both. Try to sell me the, their body. Because in their mind, there's a nuclear war. There may be mutants, there may be outcasts. He's not even sure they should go out. Well, at least another, Christopher Walken's character gets a medical condition. He needs medicine. Brendan Fraser has to go outside. As he's go outside, he's pretty much trying to understand the world. Sooner or later, he meets Alicia Silverstone from Clueless. And she doesn't know what's up with this guy. And it's about a guy that is from the 60s and just doesn't know the world of today. So, a lot of misunderstandings. Alicia not trusting this guy because... Is he for real? Is he trying to get someone out of her? And all the misunderstandings. Like, he's got all these baseball cards. Baseball cards are worth thousands of dollars. And he doesn't know anything about it. He hires Alicia to help get these supplies for his family.
he hears that everybody's divorced and he can't understand, comprehend that. And Alicia, it's a movie where it's cute because you see through Alicia Silverstone's eyes just how much Brendan Fraser enjoys the simple things of life. Steeding, going to the ocean, the sky, things that we all take for granted. And Alicia kind of has her heartstrings pulled when he's seeing this guy who seems too good to be true. And Brendan Fraser is just a likable guy. I think that's what made the film watchable for me. I like Brendan Fraser. I've always liked him. Whether it be from Encino Man, Airheads, The Mummy, this movie he's good in. He just has that likable, charming quality to him. He seems like a nice guy. He seems like a good guy in real life. Feel bad what happened to him with he got kind of pushed out of Hollywood. That's why it's nice to see him kind of slowly coming back, winning an Oscar. So it's nice that something like that could happen to a good guy like that. Other people in the film, you have Dave Foley from Kids in the Hall. He's the... I guess you would call the gay friend of Alicia, Sil Alicia Silverstone's character. Like I said, the, the, the movie I didn't really find consistently funny. It was more like, okay, this is kind of a weird concept. And it's a cute movie where Brendan Fraser's likable. Alicia Silverstone. I don't mind her in the film either. Beautiful lady. And you know eventually they're going to get together. But you're just kind of waiting for that to happen. And they seem like a cute couple. So it's kind of one of those movies where I can't think of any moments that really made me chuckle and laugh. I do think one mistake the film made was that for the most part they don't really go back to Christopher Walken and Sissy Spacek. I think there's like one more where Sissy Spacek tries to leave and then she sees like all this homeless people then she immediately goes back down. But we're so like built up with the two parents like the fact that we don't really get to see them again until pretty much near the end of the movie I don't know like a little bit of a detriment at least for me oh another interesting bit is you see a very very early perform performance by Nathan Fillion Nathan Fillion who would be in Firefly, Serenity what was that horror movie? Slither. He was in the third Gar Guardians of the Galaxy film. He's in here as Alicia's ex-boyfriend. And there's even like a little bit where the two of them almost kind of get into a fight. So I was like, oh, what do you... I had seen this film once a long time ago, so I didn't remember much about it, let alone... Probably when I did see it, I didn't know who the hell Nathan Fillion was. So, like, oh shit, Nathan Fillion's in this. Only for a little bit, but that's nice to see. Like I said, just him kind of trying to understand... Like Brendan Fraser's under, trying to understand the world that he's in. And... Like, there's a lot of other fish-out-of-water comedies I've enjoyed more. Even, like, Crocodile Dundee. That's just a guy from Australia to New York, and I found much more generally funny moments in that, and entertaining moments, compared to something like this. I think there's a lot of other funnier, wittier, fish-out-of-water stories than this one. I said, I'm trying to think of like moments that really made me chuckle and laugh, and uh, like there's a a female uh, black male, uh, well male woman, 
and he doesn't know what he's saying. He's like, oh, look, it's a, he says the N-word, but not the one that rhymes with Tigger, the one that rhymes with Hero. Imagine the word Hero, but there's a N in it, and me, yeah. And he doesn't know what he's saying, because he's from the 60s. I think that's the only time that kind of racial thing comes up. And it's one of those like, I don't know if I'm supposed to laugh at this. Uh, but yeah, I think that's the only time. And it's one of those things that because he's lived in this shelter for so long, he doesn't know a whole lot about, well, I guess he does know a lot about history, but Uh, it's not really a movie that really goes into a hefty dramatic portion. Like a guy, you think like if a guy realizes that there was never a nuclear war and 35 years of his life has now been wasted, or one could look as being wasted, one could say, no, you're worth your family and you were loved. One could view it as, you had 35 years, you could have lived a whole life, and you were stuck in here because people made a mistake. Your dad made a mistake and screwed up. That could be a lot of angst, anger, drama, anything between that you really look into, but they don't really delve into that. Maybe that could have been some potential drama, some potential storyline, storytelling, but that never, never really comes into play. Some, maybe, some would say that's a bit heavier. Just trying to be a bit more of a romantic comedy. Trying to be a bit more to the romance situation between these two lovebirds. Not so much that aspect of the plot. But like I said, that's why I said it's a cute movie. It's a movie that is fine for what it is. I'll probably never watch it again, but it was cute because of the actors, because of kind of the, the wacky scenario, and it's a harmless movie as well. So that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.